Hello, I'm Kirsten, and I work for the sustainability team here at the Solid Waste Management Program, which is part of the Department of Public Works and Environmental Services. Thank you for checking out this presentation on recycling in Fairfax County. By the end of this presentation, I hope you have gained some general understanding about waste management in our county and how you can take actionable steps to join us in this effort. On this slide are the major topics I will address today. I will start with a little bit of background on what we do on the sustainability team, specifically outreach and education, such as this presentation. I will then move on to a brief overview of our waste management system here in Fairfax County. Then I'll talk about curbside recycling, glass recycling, food scrap drop off, yard waste. And finally, we will talk a little bit about the efforts that we are implementing to get to zero waste in the county. Okay, so what do we do here on the sustainability team? What does the solid waste management program do? So Fairfax County generates a lot of solid waste. Any ideas on how much solid waste we produce? The average person generates 4.9 pounds every day. This is according to the US Environmental Protection Agency as of 2018. So you can only imagine the number that it is now. So if we have 1,140,000 residents in Fairfax County, you can do the math, it's a lot of waste. It's actually 3,430 tons per day, which is, again, a lot of waste. So what do we do on the outreach team is to talk to groups like yours and share information and tips on ways to manage our waste better. So what does waste management mean exactly? Well, once waste is generated, we have to figure out what to do with it through reuse, recycling, storage, treatment, energy recovery, and or disposal. But there is no one method that can take care of all of our problems. So like other municipalities, Fairfax County strives to create an integrated solid waste management system that follows the national solid waste management hierarchy suggested by the US EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, as in the slide. The hierarchy ranks the various management strategies from least environmentally preferred, landfilling, to most environmentally preferred, hey, why don't we minimize the amount of stuff we produce and consume in the first place? And this is where our outreach team comes in. We help the public understand what all we each can do to protect the environment, promote more sustainable choices, and protect public health. Recycling education is an important part of our messaging. Let's talk about recycling. We all want to do it right, but in order to recycle right, it's helpful to understand the process. People will ask me, is recycling a joke? I've heard it all ends up in the landfill anyway. Let's take a look. First, you have your recyclables, which you, represented by the yellow figure in the picture here, taking the stuff that is empty, clean, loose, and dry, can either take to a centralized drop-off site at I-66 or I-95 here in Fairfax County. From there, bigger trucks then take your recyclables to a material recovery facility, MRF for short. Or you may have a contract with a collector, which is depicted by the blue truck opposite the yellow figure, to come and pick up your recyclables and take them to the MRF. Before we get into what an MRF is and what it does, let's review what happens at I-66 and I-95. Have you ever been to the I-66 transfer station? It's located at 4618 West Ox Road in Fairfax, Virginia, 22030. Here, commercial haulers and residents can bring their waste and recyclables. The tipping floor to the left in the, in the picture has 21 bays, approximately 10 for residents and 10 for commercial haulers. The map on the right indicates the location and flow of traffic for other types of waste disposal and recycling that is primarily for residents and small businesses. And this is the I-95 complex located at 9850 Furnace Road in Lorton, Virginia, 22079. It also has bays for commercial haulers and residents to drop off their trash, as well as collection sites for other types of waste and recycling. So after the trash gets sorted at 66 and 95, it goes to the Material Recovery Facility or MRF. In the MRF, recyclables arrive in huge piles that then get sorted by material type using different size conveyor belts and people power. MRFs can vary quite a bit. Some MRFs are well-funded as part of larger companies. Some are run by municipalities. Others are small, privately owned operations. Recycling guidelines can seem so particular because each facility is run differently. 
they have different equipment and different markets for their plastic, for example, and those markets are constantly evolving. Okay, so once the materials are sorted, they then go on to be sold in various markets. Anything in the giant recyclable pile that was unusable, so for example, anything that came in a plastic bag or any cardboard that was contaminated by food waste or glass shards, for example, that gets taken away as residue disposal. And in Fairfax County, that means that it then goes on to Covanta, the waste to energy plant in Lorton, or it gets taken to a landfill. You should know that in Fairfax County, there are no more operating landfills. So the waste will be taken to a landfill in another jurisdiction, such as the Prince William County landfill, the Blue Ridge landfill, or the King George's landfill. You should also know that I-95 complex is an ash fill. So whatever residue is left over from the Covanta incinerator that was not turned into energy to power area homes and is not metal scraps to be reprocessed gets buried at 95. So materials collected for recycling go to a processor to be sorted and baled, like you see in the picture here, and then sold to manufacturers. So there in the picture, you can see three different types of bales, plastic jugs, plastic bottles, aluminum cans, and cardboard ready for shipment. Now, recycling is a business with a product that is vulnerable to the ups and downs of commodities markets. So sometimes it is cheaper for packagers to make things out of raw virgin, for example, plastic, than it is to buy recycled plastic. Um, however, more often than not, these these bales are incredibly valuable. They're worth lots and lots of money, and the MRFs typically have video surveillance and other types of security to protect them before they go on to the to the next step in the process. So the contamination rate um, at the MRFs is about 20%. So what is unusable? Again, what I mentioned before, if it comes in a plastic bag, the MRF is not going to open it um, for a number of different reasons. If the cardboard uh, for example, is contaminated with food waste or with glass shards, it, it will be unusable and it needs to be sent to Covanta along with other municipal solid waste. In Fairfax County, most municipal solid waste is taken to this plant in the picture here in Lorton to recover energy from it. Um, we have no open municipal solid waste landfills here. And just some cool facts and figures about the Covanta plant in Lorton. Each year it processes over 1 million tons of waste that would otherwise have ended up in landfills and instead reduces greenhouse gas emissions by over 1 million tons of carbon dioxide, which is the same as taking, uh, taking 235,000 passenger vehicles off the road for one year. Um, it also produces 93 megawatts of electricity, enough to power 67,000 area homes for one year. And it recovers over 37,000 tons of metal annually, enough to build 27,000 cars. Because recycling is a big component of the county's solid waste management plan, I do want to touch on what items we each can put out on the curb to be processed for use again. So if you look at the slide here, you will see that we have plastic bottles and jugs. You can leave the lids on them. Metal, food, and beverage cans cartons, and mixed paper and cardboard. Now, when these items are placed in the trash can and not the recycling bin, they end up taken to Covanta, the incinerator, which costs money and has environmental implications. So we really want to encourage folks to do the best that they can to separate out these materials that are pictured here as much as possible, separate them out from your regular trash, and put them in the recycling bin. Okay, so let's talk about plastics for a minute. What is the meaning of the number of stamps on the various plastic products that we're asking you to recycle? It is very confusing. Plastic numbers identify the type of plastic an item is made from, not necessarily that there is a recycling market for that item. It's also known as the resin identification code, and they range from one to seven and can be found at the bottom of many, but not all plastic items. It was developed in the late 1980s as a way to help recyclers, not consumers, identify the type of resin a plastic is made from. Technically speaking, numbers 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6 are all recyclable, but numbers 3 and 7 are not recyclable, generally. So essentially, you have to check with the recycling program in your area, as there may be variations as to what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Remember that each MRF facility is run differently and they have different equipment and different markets for their plastic. And those markets are constantly evolving. 
So the letters underneath each triangle give you a hint as to what type of plastic has been used to make that item. Um, so number one is commonly used, uh, that PET is commonly used for making soft drink, water, juice, and cooking oil containers. The plastic is easily recyclable, so it's often part of curbside recycling programs. Same with number two. This plastic is used for things like milk jugs, shampoo bottles, cleaning agents, and detergent containers. Number three plastic you may come across in bubble foils and trays for sweets and fruit. Additionally, expanded PVC foam board is used for a wide variety of commercial applications, but PVC is rarely part of a curbside recycling program. Maybe 1% of it can be ultimately recycled for things like speed bumps, roadway gutters, and cables. Number four is a soft, flexible plastic that's used for squeeze bottles like mayonnaise and other condiments and can be converted into floor tiles and shipping envelopes. Five is a plastic that is found in furniture, luggage, toys, and the lining and external borders of cars. It's increasingly being accepted in curbside recycling programs, like you can see the fives on the bottom of yogurt containers. Number six is a plastic that is commonly used in styrofoam cups, food containers, egg cartons, and the packing peanuts found in shipping boxes. But due to their lightweight nature, they break apart easily and disperse throughout the environment. Um, and so obviously they should be avoided in favor of reusable plastics that are less environmentally hazardous. And then finally, number seven includes, but is not limited to acrylic plastic, polycarbonate plastic, polyactic fibers, and nylon and fiberglass. Many food containers are made of this stuff because of its strength and transparency, but it contains concerning chemicals that can leach into the environment. So given the confusion around the numbers, Fairfax County, we want you to focus on function instead. Like, is it a water bottle? Is it a jug? Is it a carton? Is it a can? And generally the type of plastic that Fairfax County and the private trash collectors in Fairfax County will accept are on this slide here, ones, twos, what are typically stamped as ones, twos, and sometimes fives. Flexible plastics should never be recycled curbside because they can become entangled in machinery. Hence, we do not want grocery bags or any kind of plastic wrap to go into the recycling bin. This type of plastic should be recycled at participating retailers, grocery stores, places like that. Um, you can Google that information or call us for specific, um, more specifics on that. Potato chip bags are also made from layers of different types of plastic and often are lined with aluminum. It's not possible to easily separate the layers and capture the desired resin, so we don't accept those either. Okay, quiz time. Are these items on the screen recyclable? Can they go in the recycling bin? Yes, they can. Water bottles, milk jugs, detergent containers can all go in your recycling bin. Okay, what about styrofoam plates? Exactly. Styrofoam plates are a no-no. You should consider bringing your own reusable cups, plates, bowls, and silverware to uh, a restaurant for takeout um, when you go to a picnic or anything like that. What about fruit containers and to-go containers, even though they have the plastic one and two stamped on the bottom? You cannot recycle these. These do not go in your recycling bin. Again, bring your own takeout container and when possible, purchase fruits and vegetables using reusable mesh produce bags. Okay, and what about to-go cups and straws from coffee shops and juice bars? No, they are not recyclable. Instead, consider bringing your own mug or drink container to your favorite beverage purveyor. Okay, so what are some things that should not go in your recycling bin? We've talked about some of these things already. So here are some of the other items um, that should not go into your recycling bin. This includes glass, shredded paper, food waste, to-go containers, clothing items, dirty diapers, 
plastic bags, anything that could tangle up a machine, cables, chains, rope, uh, batteries. That's a really big no-no. Um, and just to emphasize uh, another no-no I just mentioned, plastic bags. Please, please, please do not put plastic bags in your recycling at the curb. Okay, so why are plastic bags a problem specifically? Well, when your collector takes your recycling to the processing center, the MRF, it starts out as a big pile that progressively sorts out large items from small items and different materials from each other. So the spinning disks in the first conveyor belt can get clogged by bags and other things like clothes hangers, cables, rope, chain that I talked about earlier, which can break the equipment, shut down the line, and create a major hazard for the workers. Um, so that's why we want your recycling loose in the bin. And we encourage you to gather your plastic bags and take them to a supermarket or grocery store where they have a plastic bag collection center. And a fun fact about that is that plastic bags, shrink wrap, and shipping envelopes lined with plastic film are actually used to make eco-friendly composite decks. Uh, I think that's really cool. You can sit outside of your house and enjoy nature and time with friends and family on what used to be a plastic bag. Besides plastic bags, other things that pose a major problem in the recycling bin include shredded paper, it's just too small and doesn't survive the trip to the recycler. It just falls through the machines and it becomes too difficult to retrieve it and it just disperses throughout the environment. Hangers, garden hoses, rope, and cables also get tangled in the machinery. Use diapers. Please don't put them in the recycling bin. You'd think the paper and plastic they're made with could be recycled, but if it contains fecal matter, it's contaminated and may be a biohazard. Even if you put dirty diapers in the trash, they are bad because the materials take a long time to break down and the pee and the poop can leach out in the landfill contaminating the groundwater. So if you have a dirty diaper, dump the poop in the toilet, then throw it in the trash. Okay, what else is a problem? Anything smaller than your hand is going to be a problem. Why? Because it gets caught or falls between the belts and gears of the machinery at the MRF. They end up being treated as trash. So straws, bottle caps, coffee pods, paper clips, plastic tampon applicators are not recyclable. Just go ahead and throw them away if you must use them. So now that we know what can be recycled, what are some other things to keep in mind when recycling um, plastic containers, cartons, cans? So we ask first that you empty out the container that you pour out the remaining liquid, scoop out any remaining food. There should be no, no type of uh, food or grease left inside of the container, no liquid. Um, if you can take it one step further and rinse out the container and give it a little time to dry before you put it in the recycling bin, that would be awesome. Um, and then you can go ahead and uh, leave the lid on or put it back on. That way nothing leaks out and contaminates the rest of the recycling. And chances are that the lid on the plastic container is plastic, and so it also can be recycled. Same with cans and like milk cartons. Um, so, and then just put your recyclables um, loose in the bin. They don't need to be bagged, certainly not with plastic bags as we've talked about already. Okay, so what about glass? Glass can definitely be recycled, but not in your recycling bin, please. Fairfax County, no longer accepts glass at curbside recycling containers. There are four main reasons for this decision. One is that glass is heavy and it adds to the cost of transporting it to the recycling centers. Two, as we've talked about before, when the glass breaks, it contaminates other more valuable recyclable materials that render them unusable for further processing so they just end up in the incinerator. The whole thing ends up in the incinerator. Three, Again, mentioned before, broken glass damages the machinery at the MRF. And four, glass recyclers prefer and pay more for glass that is collected separately because it's usually cleaner and can be further separated by color. So for these reasons, the county started a purple can club where we can, anybody, can drop off our bottles and jars anytime, any day, 24-7, 365. As you can see on the map, there are now over 40 glass recovery drop-off stations in Northern Virginia. And if you live in the county, 
there is likely a purple can close to you. At the processing plant, class can be separated by color, crushed into something called cullet, and then incorporated into new bottles and jars. Glass can also be used in construction applications such as stormwater and water pipe, bedding, erosion control, and road base. Fairfax County is pretty proud of our Purple Can Club. And if you can imagine that since the first Purple Can was installed in the spring of 2019, we have collected over 40 million pounds of glass. Okay, so food can be recycled, just not in your recycling bin, right? If you have leftovers that you don't know what to do with, the food's expired, um, you have things that are unedible, you can compost them. And if you don't want to compost them at home, you can bring them over to one of our sites at I-66 or I-95. We are generally open every single day. Check the website for the hours um, and just head over to the area where the food composting bins are located. The county is very much interested in encouraging folks to try composting. So we have a compost outpost pilot program that has been designed to create optimal conditions for composting and is a test facility to demonstrate small scale decentralized organics processing. There are two 20 foot long sea containers placed at the I-66 transfer station and food scraps and yard waste from residents and county facilities are placed into the receptacles and converted into processed compost that can be used as a nutrient rich soil amendment. This project is funded by the county's zero waste team and is hosted by the Solid Waste Management Program and our partner Compost Crew. Definitely come over and check it out. It's very cool. Firefox County residents can also take their food scraps and food leftovers to all 10 of the area farmers markets. Just check the website for locations and hours. Okay, here are common items you can and cannot compost. Nuts, breads, cereals, pasta, rice, vegetables, fruits, flowers, coffee grounds, and tea, and eggshells are all great to compost. Uh, you can also put in uncoated paper plates and bags, as well as paper towels and napkins in the compost bin. Bones, meats, and dairy are okay if you're taking them to be composted at a large facility like at one of our sites. But if you're composting at home, please don't put in bones and meats and dairy products because they will attract pests. Other items not to compost at all ever are plastic bags and wrappers, plastic coated cardboard, foil, oil, grease, and styrofoam. Okay, let's have another quiz. So what can and cannot be composted? What about stickers on fruit? Usually those are plastic and have a vinyl coating. So the answer to that is a no. Please peel those off before throwing away the rest of the fruit in the compost bin. What about mayonnaise? Mayonnaise has oil, so no, it cannot be composted. What about cardboard tubes? Yes, those can be composted as can pizza boxes. What about wood ashes? A sprinkle of wood ashes can be added to your outdoor compost pile or indoor compost bin as one component of your household waste. A small amount with each layer of compost will add nutrients to the end soil. Okay, what about medications? Medications contain chemicals that are harmful to the environment, so they cannot be composted. Instead, Go to fairfaxcounty.gov and look up drug take back centers and days. Okay, what about beer and wine? Obviously not the glass bottle, but the yeast into the beverages does give a major boost to the decomposition of your organic materials. Okay, not pictured here, but what about human and pet hair and nails? So human and pet hair, yes, in small quantities, and nails are fine as long as they don't have polish on them. What about poop? Also not pictured here. So poop, herbivore poop, like from chickens, rabbits, cows, and hamsters, are an excellent source of nitrogen and are perfectly good additions to your compost pile. But as you might imagine, the poop from carnivorous animals and pets should be strictly kept away. The feces from meat eaters and omnivores can contain dangerous pathogens and parasites 
that are not eliminated through the composting process. And these can become a health hazard by contaminating crops when the finished compost is applied around food bearing plants. Okay, what about yard waste? So grass clippings, leaves and brush can be recycled, just not in your recycling bin. You can mulch grass and leaves back into your lawn. What does that mean? So instead of collecting grass clippings in a bag, you can let the tiny chopped pieces settle down into the base of the turf where they're decomposed by the bacteria and microorganisms that live in the soil. When you mulch your grass, you keep vital nutrients in the lawn. You also save a huge amount of time and what can amount to a significant amount of money. You don't have to buy fertilizer to feed your lawn, which by the way, comes in a plastic bag, which eventually will have to go into a landfill. So brush and leaves can be separated and collected curbside. Reusable containers and bags are encouraged, but paper bags are also an option. Go to our website or that of your private collector to find out what days yard waste gets picked up. Still have questions about what to recycle in Fairfax County? The Solid Waste Management Program has an interactive feature on our website called the Waste Wizard to help you. It is real-time digital information that anyone can use. You can find the Waste Wizard by searching Fairfax Trash and Recycling. Just look on the page where it says, what goes where? What are other ways to manage waste in addition to recycling? Let's look again at the waste management hierarchy. Source reduction is at the very top. So a more concerted effort to reduce waste by not buying stuff is the best way to go. But if we have to buy stuff, let's avoid single use products. Next time you go out to eat, refuse the straw that so many restaurants automatically bring with your beverage and refuse the container to take home your leftovers. Instead, bring your own reusable straw and bring your own containers when you go out to eat. Fairfax County has an ambitious plan to reduce waste in our community. In 2021, the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors approved a zero waste plan for Fairfax County government and schools to achieve zero waste by 2030. This plan has two goals. Divert 90% of generated waste away from landfills or incinerators and decrease the total amount of waste generated by 25%. So how are we doing this? We are establishing and expanding recycling, reuse and recovery program partnerships like the one I mentioned with the food composting program with Compost Crew and the glass recycling program via the Purple Can Club. In addition, we have replaced paper towels with dryers, added water filling stations and offices, bought cleaning supplies in concentrated form and in bulk and continue to go paperless to reduce the use of paper and ink. We hope that you also will join us in this effort by implementing or expanding on some of the waste reduction methods I've mentioned here today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us anytime. On the slide is our website address and our phone number. We hope this presentation has provided you with general recycling information that you can use and that you will join us in our mission to manage our waste more sustainably in Fairfax County.